Something I noticed while I was leveling my second sorcerer to level 100 is I treat the Paragon board very differently in the early levels of the game. It's really important to hit those power spikes as early as possible so you can get into those upper level nightmare dungeons and actually gear up for an end game build. So I thought it would be a good idea to release a guide video on how to use and maximize the Paragon board as soon as you gain access to it. Greetings internet, DDA here, and I'm really excited to push out this early game Paragon guide for you all to follow while you're leveling. Like I said in the intro, I think this guide is best when used pre-level 70. When most of your glyphs aren't level 15, you're just getting your gear established and getting your end game build. You're transitioning from an early game leveling build to a final end game build. The main difference that I think about a Paragon early game guide versus a Paragon late game end game build guide is I think that the early game puts a higher emphasis on legendary node powers. Because your glyphs aren't level 15 yet, they're hard to activate. They take a lot of Paragon points to actually activate. And because you're going to be limited by Paragon points in the early game, all of this is like pulling down the power of glyphs. So I found that I would actually take the legendary nodes very early, as early as I possibly could. I would actually orient the boards in a way to do that. And I'm going to show you examples of that. So let's say you're a sorcerer fresh starting out and you know you got through your starter board you can get through your starter board in about 25 to 30 points so you know taking us to around level 52 assuming that you are you know you have the 25 paragon points from the renown so your first board like let's say you're doing a firewall leveling build which many of you do your first board I think you should add is actually Burning Instinct and to grab this early legendary node as fast as possible, Burning Instinct to increase your burning damage. Damage while you're leveling is the most important thing by far. So the first thing you're going to want to do is immediately come over and grab this damage as fast as possible. It's only going to take you 12 points to get over to this Burning Instinct node and grab it. That's going to give you extra multiplicative damage. You're going to get 10 times your critical strike uh, damage bonus plus 1% for every 25 uh, intelligence that you have. So it's not going to be a crazy amount early game. You know, you're probably rocking maybe maybe 500 intelligence uh, early game, maybe a little bit less. But a as you, you know, so this is only going to give you about 10% multiplicative, but 10% multiplicative is 10% multiplicative. And it would take you way more many points to get that out of a glyph early game. So now then what I would actually do since my, my highest priority is that legendary node, I would actually then come up and come through these inner nodes and get these magic nodes, get these this damage to elites, damage to burning enemies as I'm coming through. And then when I get around to the glyph, because we spent these extra points here coming in, right? And now ideally in these, these boards that have the glyph to the side like this, they're in a corner. Ideally, the best way is you come in on this par part of the node, right? It uses the least amount of points because you can come in and then come out on the other side. You're in this corner, you're using less points, right? So ideally, you would like to do that. But since it's early game, you want to grab this legendary node as fast as possible. I would just come up like this and then activate my glyph. Basically, I would get in here, activate my glyph that I would want to use, which I'm about to go over what glyphs are good and what boards. And I would just activate my glyph. And then when I got to the point where I was getting my glyph activated, then I would actually respec and reorient the board. So this is what I'm saying, like how you treat boards differently when you're in the early game, because this is not optimal. No one would recommend you coming in on this side of the board, but just to get that burning instinct node as fast as possible, coming in for the 12 points, get it active, and then respecking. It doesn't take that much gold to respec early game. So you get to the glyph, activate it, and then once you're at that point, you could then respec, save the 12 points here, 
and then just come in more optimally on the sides like this. So I was actually fortunate when I was leveling my fire sorcerer that I actually found both Gloves of the Illuminator and Esu's Heirloom at level 50, sacred levels. So I actually switched to Fireball, and Fireball, when you have Gloves of the Illuminator uh, and Esu's Heirloom, definitely has higher output early game. I tested it out. It was far greater output than the, the Firewall leveling build. So I would actually use the Searing Heat Board. What This is exactly what I did uh, early game. I put the Searing Heat Board on, it oriented like this, and I came over immediately just to grab not only this rare node for the extra fire damage and fire damage over time, but also to grab the Searing Heat node immediately. And then the same thing, you do the same exact thing as you did in the Burning Instinct. You would just come up, come through these nodes and then grab the the extra critical strike chance damage and critical oh, the critical strike damage in here come through and then activate your glyph and then as soon as you activate your glyph same thing the the glyph is in the corner so the best way is to come in on both sides here right and then you would then respec once you got enough points that way you could just come through like this and then you would probably end up dropping this pyromancy over here just to save the points and go into your next board. But like I said, this is an early game guide. We want to get that searing heat online as fast as possible. It gives you 12% critical strike chance when you're running like fireball um, early game. So it's really, really powerful. If you find an early gloves of the illuminator, I absolutely recommend it. Uh, even like if it's not even sacred level, like the only thing you care about with Gloves of the Illuminator is just the bouncing so that your fireball is hitting two to three times on mobs. It's like tripling the damage of fireball essentially or doubling the damage of fireball essentially. So it makes it really, really strong, really, really great for leveling. I leveled from level 50 all the way to level, I think 95 is when I found my Starfall Coronet. So um, I leveled from 50 to 95 with Fireball. I was able to push tier 90s uh, pretty easily with Fireball with like no uniques, just Ezu's Heirloom and um, Gloves of the Illuminator. So I highly recommend this. Now, if you're running an ice build for the same thing, you want to get your ice fall active as soon as possible. This is huge for you. Uh, you, know, you pretty much have permanent vulnerable when you have an ice build. So the 15% multiplicative, 30% multiplicative against frozen enemies, huge. So you want to get this active as fast as possible. It's, it is definitely better than a glyph early game. So you want to come through, grab this cold damage and chill application. So it helps you actually make mobs frozen quicker. So then you'll come up and grab this ice fall as fast as possible. So then what you can do, since you're already on this side, and like I said, points are limited, and certainly, we don't really care about this Recuperate node. It is not a good node. You know, Potion Healing, ooh. But you're already on this side. And since po points are limited, I would probably just come up through here just to get to my Glyph as fast as possible. Rather than, like, waste all the points going over here. Now, granted, you know, you do have this rare node that's good over here. Damage reduction is not that great early game. It gets more relevant in the later parts of the game. And then, like, you want this damage to chilled and non-physical damage as well. But we can orient this board and make it a little bit more optimal later game. But since we are doing it like this, you want, like, we are coming in on this side. We want to save the points get our glyph active as soon as possible. Then once we kind of flesh out this area in the center board, like you get these rare nodes, you 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 know, you get all these rare nodes in here, you grab all the all the, you know, the magic nodes that you want to grab, get your glyph activated. And then after you do all that, you can then respec again, come in on this either this side, probably the side over here would be better. Come in on this side. So that way you can grab this um, non-physical damage, then come over this way to the ice fall and actually grab this DR down here as well, like that. So when you would respec, you would actually change. Instead of coming on from the bottom here, you would come on this side uh, when you would respec. So again, just little minor differences. I like the idea of respecing. I think it's the most powerful way to play in the early game. 
because you're getting your glyph, your legendary node active as fast as possible by coming in in an uh, unoptimized way and then respecking to more optimize it when you have more points to play with. I think it's the best way to go. Likewise, if you're an ice build, you definitely want to use the frigid fate legendary node because again, you have pretty much permanent vulnerable. So really, really good here if you're ice. So come in on this side because it's actually less points to grab the frigid fate node as fast as possible like this. So again, and then you can easily come over here and grab this lucky hit chance because if you have any lucky hit triggers in your build, this will be a good node to grab. And then you can come over this way and come into your glyph because there's actually less points to come through this way since you're already on this side. Get your glyph activated in your frigid fate board and then again respec because this coming in on this side is not really best. In my opinion, it's better to come in on this side or come in on this side and then exit on either this side or this side or over here or over here. So like the top end is better in my opinion because you'll get access to this damage reduction from vulnerable. You can still grab this lucky hit chance. Um, you don't really need to come down on this side because we don't really care about this restorative node down here. So again, we're, we're just trying to get our Frigid Fate active as fast as possible, then respec. Now, if you're a Lightning build, the best node for you by far is the Static Surge node. This actually got a huge change in Season 3 where they took the ability away from the Chain Lightning enchantment to trigger your Static Surge node, which was just huge for the Sorcerer. They put it down as a bug fix, I'm pretty sure, which is just crazy that that big of a change was considered a bug. But it's just always funny, you know, the, the classic question of feature or bug. But, you know, that change just, it made this node pretty much only available to lightning builds. And if you want to level via chain lightning or you find a staff of lamb really early and you want to do charge bolts, then static surge is amazing for you. So you want to come in on this side just again to get that legendary node active as fast as possible. As fast as possible, we want this legendary node. So just a few points. Grab this damage to stun and damage to, from elites while you're coming up. And then come up through and then go into your board to activate your glyph, whichever glyph you happen to see drop or you, see, or you so choose. Grab your rare nodes. It actually may be better to come in on this side regardless. Just to grab this, this is a really good damage rare node here. And you don't really need the lightning resistance maximum life over here. So you could exit the board over on the paralyzing side, grabbing your damage to stun and maximum mana. Maximum mana is always good to grab um, early game, especially. So I would probably, I may actually keep the board like this just always, and then just come out on this side and just grab this extra rare node over here for the damage to stun and maximum mana. Maybe I would come out like that and then come out like this here. So I think this is pretty good. And, you know, like your center of the board is going to change depending on what glyph you have. You want to change it. So another really great node for you when you are a lightning build is actually the Ceaseless Conduit board because the Crackling Energy does a lot of damage early game. It really does. So every 20 intelligence, you're going to get 3% multiplicative damage. This is actually does add up to be a lot of damage early game, especially if you're taking the overflowing energy key passive. Uh, it hits, a, crackling energy hits an additional enemy. Unstable currents makes crackling energy tick faster. So it, it really does add up a, a, to be a lot of damage. I think one, I, I think last season I leveled lightning and I did actually run ceaseless conduit for a while. And my crackling energy was ticking for about 20 to 30 K. I'm pretty sure it was ticking for, so yeah, I just early game, I, I ended up specking out of it pretty once I got a final end game build. But for a while I was running Ceaseless Conduit. So I would I would recommend it early game. So to get it as fast as possible, you come in on this side. You can grab this resist all and damage over time reduction. The resist all is good just to cap out your resistance early game. And then just grab your crackling energy node there. So then the best way to get to your glyph would be to go this way then. Because you get to grab your um, this damage to elites and movement speed after killing an elite. Always good to grab this. And then you can come down and just get into your node here. Now you can already see like we're, we're right here, right? Like we're definitely going to want to respec. 
We can exit out of this board, but we just we, we absolutely want to respect to cut all these points out as soon as we can. So that way that we can um, we can more optimize our point use. And it really depends too. I, I would say, especially with the ceaseless conduit board, it really depends because if by the time you have your say third board and you, and maybe you have a glyph that you want to throw in quickly, you have a good one that you found. Um, maybe you want to actually orient this board differently and push back the ceaseless conduit node because it's not going to add a crazy amount of damage. And maybe you just want to come in on this side here and come out of this side here, down here, um, and just and do it that way. It really depends on what glyphs that you see drop, which we're going to go into in a, in a little bit. So now the final board that all builds should consider using while leveling is the enchantment master board. I really like this board early game. Even when you're using the fire bolt enchantment, damage is damage and it doesn't hurt for you to just add more damage. When you're using triggered abilities with the enchantment master node, it becomes amazing, especially early game because it's hard for you to trigger some of those triggers like firewall enchantment is a big one that comes to mind, ball lightning enchantment, all of these like percentage triggered abilities or like say the ones that require you to spend mana, like the chain lightning enchantment or the, the Hydra enchantment, this severely reduces the amount that you need to trigger or severely increases the amount of percentage chance for you to trigger. And when you have an early game build, it's really difficult for you to spend all that mana or really difficult for you to have a high lucky hit. So this allows you to use your enchantments so, so much better. So to grab it early game, you just want to come in on this side and grab this extra damage resistance, uh, the resistance to all and damage reduction from uh, damage over time effects. Grab your enchantment master node. And then once you come through like this and you can grab all this non-physical damage here and then likewise, all this non-physical damage here, grab these two nodes and then come through, activate your glyph and then respect to cut off this half here. Because again, it's in the corner, so you want to come in on this side and come in on this side as well. Or alternatively, you could come up like this to this node. I've done that a few times. And likewise, you could also maybe come on this side as well. It really depends like what glyphs you're activating and things like that. But we'll get into that more right now. So the way that I'm going to talk about all these glyphs is I'm going to break them up into what stat you need to activate them. And then I'm going to talk about the boards that are good for you to activate them in. So all of your intelligence glyphs are listed below. Adept, Enchanter, Elementalist, these are pretty standard glyphs. I'm going to talk towards the end of the video about what glyphs are better. But when you're early game, uh, it really is dependent on what glyphs are dropping. So I wanted to give you an easy access to this video that if you see a certain glyph drop, you can come back to the video and then go to that specific section and see how you can use that glyph. So your starter board is actually really good for activating intelligence glyphs. You have some kind of an orientation like this. This gives you access to 40 intelligence pretty easily. And then likewise, you have an additional two nodes over here that if you wanted, you could activate the, this over here and add an additional 10 intelligence if, say, you put a glyph in that was like a depth that would scale off of how much intelligence you would actually have. Now, the only thing I will say about the starter board is that while intelligence is great to activate in here and you do have access to 50 intelligence, the starter board is only one of four boards that you can activate a dexterity glyph early game. And because these dexterity glyphs are at a premium for the sorcerer and you want those dexterity glyphs activated, you may want to save the starter board for a dexterity option. What I think is actually one of the best boards to activate an intelligence glyph early game is the elemental summoner board because it is very easy. You have a lot of access to intelligence. Likewise, you have access to rare nodes that you could buff up if that was the intelligence glyph you were using. And then it's just so, for so little points, like you could see all the intelligence is located around the glyph. So it's very easy for you to activate intelligence in here. And likewise, you have this non-physical damage that you can grab 
while coming into the board. This is amazing for you early game to activate intelligence glyphs and I highly recommend it. And likewise, the elemental summoner board can only activate willpower as another option early game. You have all this willpower here and willpower is only really good as you get later into the game because most of the glyphs that are associated with willpower are defensive glyphs and we don't really, we would re prefer damage. Another board that I think is really great to activate intelligence glyphs is the Frigid Fate board. This is excellent. Much like the starter board, it has access to 50 intelligence, but you only need, you know, just this leg here. You could just take these out. And then that has that has you uh, the 40 intelligence that you're going to need to activate the glyphs. Very easy. Um, also, you're get, you have access to the Frigid Fate node, which is really great for a lot of builds to get that online. And then likewise, the Frigid Fate board only has an option of willpower for early game, like pre-level 15 glyphs. So willpower is not great because it's mostly defensive early game. So activating your intelligence glyphs in the Frigid Fate board is preferable. And if like, let's say you would have the Enchanter in here, you could easily get 50 intelligence, really boosting up your non-physical damage early game to make the most out of your Frigid Fate node. Another great board to activate intelligence glyphs is, is the Enchantment Master board. But it's a little weird because you don't actually have access to the rare nodes until your glyph is level 15. That makes it so you definitely don't want to run the elementalist glyph in here because you're not getting access to like elemental balance or erudite nodes. But like if you wanted to throw say like adept or unleash or charged in here, you could do that pretty easily and you just have to kind of orient the way I'm showing here. You can come out on this side like this, grab this node over here, come in on this side like this, and then likewise, you could just come out this way like that. Like I said, it's not ideal because you don't have access to the rare nodes because one of the better intelligence glyphs are is the elementalist. And you can't use it in this board really. Uh, but you do have some other options for intelligence. So an option for ice builds out there to activate an intelligence glyph would be the ice fall board. Of course, you could use the other ones I mentioned previously, the elemental summoner, the enchantment master, or the starter board. But ice fall is a good option because you know you're going to always want to go in here to grab the legendary node. And like likewise, ice fall uh, is another one of those boards that can only activate willpower glyphs until level 15. So, uh, you know, willpower, not great early game damage reduction. You mainly want damage. So if you want to activate an intelligence glyph, you have to kind of orient it like this. You can grab this uh, chill damage and non-physical damage. And then likewise, grab these rare nodes and do this weird, funky uh, shuriken star uh, uh, kind of orientation here. Grab the 45 intelligence for whatever. Whatever, you know, intelligence glyph you're looking to act activate in here, maybe you activate Adept or, you know, Enchanter for the non-physical damage, or maybe you throw Unleash in here. Whatever board you you're, uh, want to use intelligence in here, it's pretty good. So now the other boards that I have left are Burning Instinct, Searing Heat, and Ceaseless Conduit. All three of these boards are going to fall into the same category, which is... Some of them are good to activate intelligence glyphs. Searing Heat and Ceaseless Conduit are actually really good for activating intelligence glyphs. Not so much Burning Instinct, but all three of them are going to fall into the same category that your starter board does, which is they are okay at activating intelligence glyphs early game, but they are one of the only four options you have to activate dexterity glyphs early game. So rather than going over how to activate intelligence glyphs in these, I'm gonna move into the dexterity section, which are gonna be some of your strongest glyphs. So of your dexterity options, Searing Heat is one of the better ones, especially if you're doing like a fireball leveling build, really, really strong. Uh, so you wanna come in like this to grab the fire damage and then grab all this dexterity here. You need to grab every single dexterity node to activate a dexterity glyph in here, like control. So you want to do it like this. You're going to also have to come over kind of funky like this, but you can easily exit the board over here after you grab your searing heat 
legendary node or if you're just using the board for the glyph activation you can easily do it like this searing heat is great for dexterity so for all those firewall leveling builds out there that want to get the burning instinct node really early i recommend running burning instinct uh, dexterity glyphs really really strong so you have to do some weird funky stuff early game to get your dexterity glyph activated you see i'm like going in like a loop around here uh, you need all this dexterity in order to activate the glyph. So it's unfortunate, but well worth it. Once you get your glyph above level 15, it gets a little easier. But, you know, if you want to activate something like control in here, this is going to be how, how it looks. Um, just really great. Again, dexterity glyphs are some of the strongest glyphs for the sorcerer in the game. So Burning Instinct is at the top of my list to activate those. So another great board to activate um, dexterity glyphs is the Ceaseless Conduit board. Uh, really, really strong. Everyone knows the Ceaseless Conduit board because our late game builds, most of us use it to put the Destruction Glyph into because it has access to the highest amount of Dexterity once the Glyphs are past level 15. But pre-level 15, you only have access to a bare minimum of 15, uh, no, 25 Dexterity points. And you can do this kind of weird orientation here but you're still able to come in and leave the board very quickly with a very minimal amount of points. You can see I'm barely using any points. If you're not a lightning build and you don't care about any of this lightning damage in here or anything like that, you could come in and exit the board very easily early game. Just get that dexterity node activated and then leave the board to go to your next one. Likewise, the starter board is always an option for you also to use dexterity, although I typically end up using... Um, intelligence glyphs in here because it has access to both of these amazing rare nodes uh, to use with uh, the elementalist glyph so usually that's what i'm doing early game but if you wanted to activate a dexterity glyph in here you can do that very easily with the setup that i show here so you know you're gonna have to grab all this dexterity to get the 27 to activate the glyph but it's still really strong and an option for you so for your willpower glyphs, like I said before, I put willpower glyphs on my lowest priority early game because they're damage reduction glyphs, and I highly, highly value damage over damage reduction in the early game. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the willpower glyphs. Pretty much the best willpower glyph in the game is reinforced, in my opinion. Reinforced is amazing. Um, another option is this, if you're an ice build, is this frostbite glyph, which is good. Icefall is actually a great board to activate willpower glyphs on. If you're coming in on this side and you grab this non-physical damage here and damage to chilled, you can easily activate a willpower glyph while you're exiting the board on this side over here. Really nice there. So like I said, reinforced is great, especially in Icefall because it has access to both the rare nodes um, or, or the frostbite. Likewise, Elemental Summoner can activate Willpower Glyphs, but in my opinion, Elemental Summoner is way better at with Intelligence Glyphs. You have so much Intelligence in the Elemental Summoner board, so I would recommend Intelligence over Willpower in there. There's two other boards that you can activate Willpower Glyphs, and that is the Enchantment Master board and the Static Surge board. But the problem with activating Willpower Glyphs in both of these boards is both the boards do not have access to their rare nodes. And the best willpower glyphs in the game boost up your rare notes. So like I said, the willpower glyphs are very limited. If you absolutely wanted to use one, I would recommend either Icefall or the Enchantment Master. But again, I would only do Enchantment Master if I absolutely needed like reinforced in and I just wanted that DR. But I think that it's just better to do uh, intelligence in there. So now the last thing I want to do and I want to go over is what glyphs are best to use in, just in general. So now this tier list is going to come with a big caveat that this is specifically only an early game tier list. And as I go over it, I'm going to note that some of these glyphs positions will change depending on you playing in the early game or in the late game. Now for your S tier glyphs, top of my list is Unleash and Flame Feeder. Unleash, you have such mana problems early game. Before you have an end game build established with a lot of lucky hit, restore primary resource with perfect aspects, mana cost reduction rolls, you know, restore primary resource rolls, like all these things are very particular 
for you to get and take some time for you to get those roles, get that ancestral gear with those roles on them. There's only one option that we have in our Paragon board to give us mana regeneration. Remember, maximum mana does not give you mana regeneration. It just gives you a max, a, a more of a place for the mana to go, which helps, but it does not nearly help as much as mana regeneration. So top of my list for early game, Unleash Glyph, I'm always putting in an early game. And a lot of times I take it out of my build late game. So this is a glyph. This is an example of one that would probably drop a tier at least um, in a late game tier list. But for your early game, unleash S tier. Easy. Flame Feeder is just one of those glyphs. It's a raw damage increase. And it's one of the easiest raw damage increases to activate. Just throw in Firebolt Enchantment, which most builds are doing anyway. And just you have this 10% multiplicative damage you're adding. You have a ton of additive damage that you're adding it's so easy to activate it's just a large amount of damage that's always active for you very easy to activate so it gets s tier control and destruction are huge damage increases they have some of the highest multiplicative damage increases they are a little bit hard to use early game but it's not hard enough to use that i think it's dropping out of s tier control has literally the highest multiplicative damage that you can get in a glyph 20% multiplicative when you apply either frozen or stunned. Now, some builds are a little bit hard for you to do that, but 20% multiplicative, it's worth the condition. And destruction, you know, your your critical strike chance is not going to be crazy high early game, but most of the Sork builds out there have a crit-based build. Most of you are going to be building towards crit, and you're going to be looking for crit pretty much the whole time while you're playing. So it's still good enough for it to be just S tier always. And charge is S tier. It's funny because when I was making this video, I thought, oh, well, charge is definitely going to drop a tier uh, in the late game. But then I thought, wait a minute. Actually, the end game Abattoir of Zir Sorcerer Lightning builds actually use charge because it has the highest multiplicative non-conditional damage. 15% multiplicative when you're picking up uh, Crackling Energy, it's huge. So it actually may just stay in S tier always. Early game, you're going to notice the Crackling Energy damage, but you're always going to get that 15% multiplicative damage on there. Your A tiers are going to be Elementalist, Tactician, Exploit, and, and Winter. Now, Elementalist is one of those glyphs. It's difficult to activate all three damage types early game. Your build, you may have to use a builder. You may be kind of pigeonholed and using like Frost Nova and things like that. Like it's, it, it may be difficult for you to actually fully activate the Elementalist glyph, which is why it drops just one tier, but it would definitely be S tier for end game. Tactician is the same. Tactician is an amazing a glyph. However, Early game, you may not have a lot of cooldown reduction. There may be some time where this damage mul multiplier falls off because you're not keeping the permanent, you know, defensive ability spam that you need to keep it on always. So it drops a tier again because where there's a lack of cooldown reduction early game. Exploit is definitely S tier for ice builds. For ice builds, exploit is S tier, no question, because they can keep vulnerable pretty much up permanently. But for other builds, it's probably more like B tier because vulnerability is pretty much only Frost Nova at that point for non-ice builds. So that's why, you know, I took S tier, B tier. I'm like, all right, I'll meet in the middle and say A tier overall for just all considering all builds. And then Winter is just a really solid damage increase, but it does have some ramp time. Uh, and the, the ramp time associated with it, like getting to that 15%, is the reason for me it dropped down one tier because it's not like Flame Feeder or Tactician that you hit one button and then you instantly have the damage. Um, there's some ramp associated with Winter, so Otherwise, it would be S tier, but it dropped one tier for me. Now, your B tier glyphs are really just kind of specialized glyphs that only kind of affect one thing. Like, for example, with the Adept or the Conjurer glyphs, you know, those are just really affecting like one specific build. In the case of Adept, it doesn't actually give you damage until you start really upping the level of it. Um, it just gives you size, so that may or not, may not be damage, and depending on the combos that you can do with it. And then likewise, the Enchanter Glyph 
chances are you're not cap capping out on your resistance early game. So that glyph really isn't that great, although it gives you non-physical damage. Non-physical damage is amazing, especially early game. And it gives you a lot of it too, which is why it didn't go in C tier for me for early game. It, it jumped up to B tier because the non-physical damage is just so amazing. Pyromaniac and Torch are good damage multipliers, uh, but it, there's a, just a lot of ramp time associated with them. Pyromaniac, you need to activate, I think, four skills. And Torch, you need to have so many burning enemies around you. Like, you can activate these things, uh, but just their conditions kind of drop them down for me. And then likewise, B tier is where I put literally all the damage reduction glyphs because I felt like they were good, um, you know, if you need the damage reduction, but if early game really you want damage you don't really want damage reduction so all the damage reduction ones just went in b tier for me good to consider but maybe not the best you actually want damage and then for your c tier i have electrocute which is just a honestly it's just a terrible glyph i i i have never used this glyph i think it just needs a redesign or a massive buff you know five percent crit is low enough but 5% crit tied to only stunned enemies or it's like, what, what is going on with this glyph? It's like low numbers and a condition. What's going on? C tier. No. And stalagmite is really a really strong glyph. I mean, we have whole builds that are just completely revolved around ice spikes, but early game, you're probably going to have zero access to ice spikes. So you're probably not going to use it. Now, if you happen to get super lucky and find like, the ice spike aspect for blizzard or like a blue rose or something and you want to just throw in stalagmite at that point it would jump to like a tier at that point but being that early game you know you're really limited on what you can activate with it it goes in c tier for me so i hope you enjoyed my early game paragon build guide for the sorcerer we're going to be coming out with a late game Paragon board guide for the Sorcerer coming out in a few weeks. So if you like this video, please hit that like button. Please hit subscribe to see that end game uh, build guide video. And as always, turn your dial to Random Number Gaming for weekly updates on Diablo 4.